so I'm out in the autumn woodland uh, to work on my pre-prepared Constantina sketchbook and it's a little bit tricky this year it's interesting because I was out here this time last year and it's been a little bit slower this year and because I'm in the northwest of the UK it's also tricky with the weather because there's been quite a lot of rain not a lot of bright sunlight um, the temperature's been weird it's quite mild now so I just thought I'd do this little bit of an intro to show you what the woodland is like now and I'm obviously choosing pockets that are really turning now and interestingly I'm really noticing the horse chestnuts this year and I don't remember noticing them in the same way last year now I don't know why that is and whether it's just I just didn't notice them last year but last year I was very aware of the beaches and you can see the real orange rust of the beach and the golds and yellows of the horse chestnuts so anyway I will stop walking and I'm going to settle down and uh, show you what I'm doing okay okay so I've got my usual backpack and obviously my concertina and then I've got this uh, plastic container ice cream container with a whole selection of stuff in it probably a lot of them things I won't use but I've got a couple of Posca markers I just wanted to show you the range of things that could be used a couple of Posca markers I've got a couple of uh, acrylic paints another one in there somewhere I don't know where and uh, I've got a spray bottle of water some art graft which is a little bit like charcoal and you wet it and then it fixes uh, another Posca marker uh, I've got a glue stick but I haven't really got any papers with me today and it's probably going to be a bit awkward to put more papers on although you can do that and I could do that when I got back to the studio uh, nothing to stop me and then I've got some ink tense pencils in uh autumny colours and a dark colour as well as a blue in there somewhere. Uh, I've got a, a graphite pencil uh, and I have got a couple of these pit pens which are a little bit like um, the usual sort of, um, actually these ones have got more of a more of a sort of a brush tip but uh, that's sort of a permanent ink in case you want it. And then I've got some woodies, these are the woodies, the chunky pencils, uh, again water soluble, and some gouache. So a whole range of things in there really. As I say, uh, most of them I won't necessarily use, but I just wanted to show you the range of things that could be used. And uh, I often will just choose a couple of things from this box, um, but at least you get to see the sorts of things that you can use. Okay, I will get started.
Okay, so I've been out and about working over my Constantina today because finally uh, it's getting a little bit better the weather. It's uh, cold but it's brighter and uh, there's no rain today which is very fortunate. So I took the opportunity and did a few pages and what I thought I would just do is to show you, you've obviously seen some of me working outside and I don't uh, finish them usually outside. I usually find that um, I create quite busy um, situations with the with the sheets uh, with the pages uh, out on location and what is quite nice is to come back and just very simply edit them and sometimes I'm just going to show you one page I've got a few pages that I've been working over here and I thought I'd just show you one page oftentimes I just use white acrylic and oftentimes I'm tidying up the edge and clarifying and the reason I do this uh, back in the studio or back wherever I have a space is because you what I find is it's very useful if you look at it in a different way when you're back in the studio and you're looking at it as a composition piece, not thinking about the scene, but actually does it work as a piece? So it's kind of you're removing yourself really in a way from uh, the uh, original place um, and I find that that just helps a little bit it's a little bit like when you're working on your paintings uh, it's the studies are great when they're done on location but you need that breathing space sometimes and I think it's just nice even just editing simply like that and what I tend to do is I tend to look back at the previous page to make sure it connects in so um, I've just put a red line here, which is actually a, a pencil that I had, uh, an Inktense pencil, just to connect that into the previous page. So I'm always looking at how the pages connect to each other and also um, how to simplify and create uh, something uh, that, that kind of works as a composition once I'm back in the studio. And I'm not necessarily, I've done this red line so I'm just using the same, if I use extra marks, I'm using the same um, things that I used outside on location. And I'm kind of wanting to get this feeling of the of the slope, which is what it was. Um, and although I said, you know, I'm getting away from that, I do kind of like that idea of this um, could be a tree. This, this piece here comes all the way down. And um, put a dark edge on it so you can see. And then these are sort of like go further up because it's like on a slope. But it's it's very sort of um, ambiguous in many respects. And, and that's what how I like it, really. I like the ambiguity. And I don't usually add a, much in terms of the pencils and pens. I'm really just after simplifying at this stage. I might not do that much more to that piece, but um, I do need to think about how it connects into here. So, and, and actually, if I remember, I ended up being in the same location as I was doing this uh, double page. So it makes perfect sense for me to carry on with it. And I do quite like having a little bit of breathing space because this bit is very busy. So, um, as I said, you know, differences all the way along the edge. Anyway, I think you get the impression I'm really just simplifying and clarifying and giving myself a little bit of, you know, breathing space in the pages. Okay, so here is the Constantina that I've worked over and I've also done some editing and I'm not sure that it's entirely uh, completely finished, but I thought I'd just walk through it with you and share with you the pages as they are now in a complete or semi-complete state. So as you can see, uh, I've edited uh, as I was showing you and added a little bit more white space in. I guess as I'm looking through it, I see that um, there's three things going on really. There's the shapes of the, there's the ground plane and everything going on in the ground and the leaves and the green that still exists and the nettles and the ferns, etc. And then we've got the verticals, obviously, um, reflecting some of the trees. And then we've got canopies. So those are the kind of things that are going on in various shapes and guises 
I can see quite a lot of the ground plane here on this uh, one and it's quite I've edited white space into into it not just at the base and then this one is actually I remember looking down the pathway and then you've got the, the amazing canopies of yellow and oranges so that's what that reflects so obviously it's not completely representative so you don't necessarily see a view that's not how these were done they were looking at various aspects of the view and the feel of the autumn and the marks and the shapes so you don't uh, see necessarily views and this was some of the marks that I was getting from the ferns as I was looking and then this one more of the sort of like the the eruption of the orange and the gold that kind of goes from the ground all the way up uh, sometimes to the canopies that's what that one is reflecting Lots of spidery lines. This is kind of could be a, a tree trunk, but it's obviously made up of different patterns and marks as the collage pieces and lines that I've sort of scribbled in. Uh, and oftentimes all the little branches and things are quite scribbly in the way that they look. So that's those lines there. And I've quite a lot of them done with ink tense pencils. And then this one was interesting because it was a sort of a it's a bank, and so the trees are kind of go down the bank. So that's what this sort of big sort of swathe of colour and a fallen leaves it was and, and twigs and some greenery still in existence. So that was what that was all about. And it kind of continued on to the other, but this was the bank became higher um, and that was that was all sort of banking. Although that's not, you know, obviously it's not, as I say, it's not a completely representative and I was looking in different directions and marking the twigs and the shapes of the different elements. Lots of golds and oranges. And then this one, uh, a look down the path and the way the light was hitting uh, the trees and the verticals meant that it actually went quite sort of like an almost a sort of a a, a, a browny whitey colour, which is what that is And as, as the light hits. But then you've got the vibrancy of the canopies that have all of their leaf colour. And then you've got the horse chestnuts was something this year that I was noticing a lot, hence the reference there and then this was text that was originally in there talking about uh, the woodland a uh, different world that's uh, an, an excerpt from a book that i've been reading and then this again is interesting because you have these vertical branches in the in the trees with all of these orange and um, burnt sort of rusty colored leaves which were quite vibrant but then you had the sort of like the quite muted colors of bramble leaves and different uh, decaying uh, lower ground cover leaves, which is what that represents. And then this is the final page, which I think really um, reflects those whole that whole idea of the verticals on the one hand, but with these bands of colour um, and the bands of the yellow and the oranges and the reds and the uh, going from from big blocks to sort of like individual leaves. Um, and and uh, that's kind of quite a, a kind of f feel. The, this one here reflects how I was, you know, how I really felt about it, and it does reflect something of the of what it was really like. Um, so I will I will leave it there. But thank you ever so much for watching, and please do like and subscribe and make comments. I really love to hear what you have to say, and if you're trying your own Constantina, uh, let me know how you get on with it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.